Alola everyone, it's the Munch and welcome back to Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon and welcome to a brand new year because it is now 2018 and I am so excited for this brand new year. It's a new year but the same old orange here back in Alola and we're actually here in Mali City where last episode we made it to the third island and we're just about ready to head up to the next trial which is on uh, the Hokulani Observatory but as you can see we've got a familiar face here so we're definitely going to be talking a lot about what I plan on doing this year, 2018, and how 2017 overall went, but like I said, we first gotta talk to our friend Lily. Orange, I'm glad I ran into you. I was actually wondering, wondering about Nebby. What did you think of her? The president of the Ether Foundation, I mean. Eh, uh, she was, she was alright, I guess. Is that right? Of course, she must be nice. She's trying to protect Pokemon, isn't she? Um, anyway, what I really wanted to ask was, uh, Nebby, like I said. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I want to take Nebby to visit Ula Ula Ruins, but they're located deep in a large desert. I don't want to ask that much of you. Right now, I'm planning to visit Mali Library. There's a book that I want to look for there. Maybe you'd be willing to help me. I know that Mali Library is here within the city of Mali somewhere. Even I should be able to find it. I can do this! Yeah, you can do it, Lily. Go and do that while I talk about the new year and stuff because that's right it's a brand new year and I don't know if it's just me but I feel like 2017 went by like way too quickly I don't know if it was all of the stuff going on um, both here in the US and just in general in the world and on the internet or if it's maybe the fact that I'm getting a little bit older I'm actually 23 now uh, which it definitely makes me feel a little bit older honestly I don't feel old at all yet it's just kind of weird that um, definitely getting closer to 25. I feel like at 25 is when I'll actually start feeling a little bit older, but you know, I got two good years left still. Anyway, there's a Malasada shop here. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the crazy lady with the Puku Muku here. I thought she said she might be at another shop, but either way, let me know what you guys thought of 2017 down below. Was it an awesome year? Was it a little bit spicy? Was it a little bit sad? Regardless of what you felt, I just want to know how it was for you because like I said, for me, it feels like it was definitely a year of change, a year of transition, and it just went really, really quick for me. But I am very excited for 2018 and for the new videos that I'll be coming out with here on the channel. And I guess first of all to finish up this game because it's definitely taken us a while. I can't believe it's already uh, the next year and I'm still only not even on episode 20. By the way, here's a restaurant which we really don't need to check out right now. I'm not sure why I'm so inclined on exploring all of Valley City because the real thing that I want to explore, you guys already know, is the clothes shop which is actually right over here. And look, there's actually a totem sticker which I'm going to pick up because, I don't know, I feel like I should start collecting the totem stickers now that we're on the third island. Um, there's actually a totem Pokemon that I kind of want to get as well. And of course, totem stickers let us get those. But anyway, let's search for some new clothing because here in Mali, I think they actually have, yeah, that's right, the jeans. And I love me some jeans. I think I actually had the jeans for quite a long time in uh, the original Sun and Moon. But now we've got cutoff jeans, which actually look even cooler than before. Uh, so I think I'm actually going to grab these real quick, even though they don't really look that good with the shirt we're currently wearing. Um, I just like the jeans overall. And actually, these shirts are kind of cool too, but I'm not going to grab those. Let's see what kind of shoes we've got oh actually these are pretty sick except I like the Pikachu shoes that we've got on currently so maybe I actually won't change that much for now but make sure to hit that like button because we are heading off to the Mali library I would check out the haircut place but I feel like they don't really add any new options and whoa hold on a second there's actually something quite interesting to check out here we can't really read the sign but as we'll soon find out this here is got a very familiar sound to it. Ten Hut, welcome Cantonian in the making. This is the Cantonian gym, kid. You can challenge us if you pay a thousand poke bucks. What? What do you mean by gym? Hey, little tyke. My name is Jim Guide. This is the Cantonian gym. It takes big and brassy nerfs to take on this gym with your puny power. Defeat all the gym trainers and you will be the new Cantonian. What does that even mean, the new Cantonian? I guess I'm gonna challenge it. Of course they are going for a... Uh, kind of traditional gym vibe here as you guys know in Alola they don't really have gyms instead we've got the uh, island challenge and the trials but here in Ultra Sun and Moon they've actually built a gym of, or a gym of their own definitely not a gym those are a little bit more spooky but anyway as you can tell or I guess if you can't tell this gym is based off of Lieutenant Surge over in Vermilion City's gym uh, with all the trash cans in there as the beauty here is mentioning and let's take her on I wonder if they're actually gonna have mostly electric types because of course it is based on Lieutenant Surge and he is a master of electric Pokemon but 
this lady here is actually going to have a Minchino, which is even cooler because that's actually one of my favorite Pokemon. And it's awesome to see on the first day of the year a familiar face here and actually also a familiar habit, which is me not healing up my Pokemon. Not really a good habit, but you know, it's there and Minchino already put us to sleep, so that's not good either. You know, I've always wondered why uh, moves like... I guess Hypnosis can hit on a Ghost Pokemon because technically it's a normal type move even though it is a status sailing move. I guess that's more technically than the other thing because status moves I guess don't really affect the typing. Except you can't paralyze electric types so I guess it sometimes does. I don't even know why I'm getting into the details right now. The point is that Ghost types can get put to sleep because it's not doesn't really count as a normal move. But, thankfully it didn't put our navy to sleep and that means that we can bubble beam it up and yes, avoided the tail slap too. I don't know if that little Minchino would have had the uh, skill link ability, but if it did that definitely would have been annoying to deal with. So, let's just wrap things up here with an Aqua Jet, but yeah, if you guys don't remember, a long time ago in a galaxy not so far away, uh, Minchino actually kind of used to be the mascot of this channel all the way back when I was doing Pokemon Black and White. So yeah, that was quite a while ago, but there's the first gym trainer down if you can call these gym trainers that is i guess i should take quote unquote gym ah so this is what a pokemon gym is like i haven't had this much fun in years oh is this guy like actually taking on the gym as well huh i guess that's kind of cool i always wondered why in the uh, gyms and i guess the old school pokemon games that's kind of weird to say because it's not really old school but i guess most of the pokemon games that do have gyms you never really see other trainers taking on the gym you only ever see like the ones that train under the gym leader, you know? And here we've got another beauty here uh, with a cutie fly, which is definitely not going to have a fun time against Nani's flame charge. That is, if Nani was awake. Uh, but I don't think this cutie fly has got anything to put us back to sleep, so I guess we could just go real quick for a full heal. Oh, I only have one of them. Isn't that great? I should probably stock up on items, actually. Uh, but then again, I guess I need to heal up my team as well, so I'll definitely go do that in a little bit heal up the team and also buy some items but yeah I'm very curious to see who the gym leader here might be I think at the end of the gym we saw it was like a karate trainer I forgot what those are called black belt I guess but why is the gym full of beauties is what I'm wondering I don't know if we'll actually get an explanation to it because honestly I don't really remember uh, taking this on in ultra moon all that while back but did she just say if we want to order a drink can we actually get drinks here, or is it because someone gave us a soda pop? I don't know, but this gym is just full of the owner's fond memories of the Kanto region. Huh, so who actually is the owner of this gym? Maybe this guy? I'm not a trainer, just a regular here at the gym. Oh, so what does that mean? Like, I guess people just hang out here because they love Kanto so much? Welcome, trainer. I'm Adrian, one of the gym trainers here. Well, that's great, Adrian. Hopefully you can give us a little bit more training. Uh, now that Nani isn't asleep anymore, we can actually take you on. Hopefully she doesn't have something else that can put us to bed. Oh no, it's Smoochum. I know this thing loves to use that lovely kiss or whatever the move is actually called, but it does actually put you to sleep. So that's kind of crazy that I predicted that. Maybe that's like the gimmick behind this gym. Instead of uh, having electric types like the gym it's actually based off of, they just got stuff that annoys you by putting you to sleep and flinching you like heart stamp. Oh, come on. Really, Smoochum? You're really going to do this right now. After I predicted that you do exactly this, you don't actually have to go and do it. Come on, bro. And of course, it flinched us with that heart stamp too, which honestly, I don't even remember the move heart stamp. I think I've only ever seen uh, that one bat Pokemon from actually the Unova region have it. I forgot what it's called though. Swoobat? Yeah, it's literally got a name almost like Zubat, but is that the evolution? Oh yeah, it's Woobat and then Swoobat. I don't know why. Those are kind of easy to forget, I guess, Pokemon, especially because they're so close to... Zubat, you know, Zubat, Swubat. I don't know, I, I've been known to not be able to say my Z's properly, like, for a while I used to call pizza, pizza, just because, uh, I don't know, English has a second language, maybe, I'm not sure, but I hear it's a perfect recreation of a famous gym in Vermilion. Those Kanto folks sure know how to show people a good time. Really? What is a good time about this? You guys are literally just in the corner chatting while all these beauties are around. I mean, I guess they're probably enjoying the beauties if I'm really thinking about it. But we got one more trainer back here. If you defeat the four trainers, you'll be able to challenge the gym leader himself. So is the gym leader the one that built this whole place? Maybe he's just really inspired by gyms in general because they're definitely not here in Alola. So I could see how if someone was from Kanto, they'd be missing out on the fact that gyms don't exist here. So you want to make one for yourself. But we got a, what is that Pokemon actually? 
What? You're still asleep, Nani? I'm actually asking myself, Nani, like, why are you asleep? Uh, but yeah, it's Fomantis. I thought it was Lurantis for a second, because I feel like we're far enough in the game that we should have more evolutions at this point, but not for Beauty Dallas here. And thankfully, we woke up on the second turn, so this little Fomantis is not going to be living for too much longer. I'm glad we're getting some experience on Nani, though, or I guess more experience, because she's got to catch up to the rest of the team. But you're such a tease. I bet I'm not even the first trainer you've beaten here. Uh, no? Were you supposed to be? She literally said to take on all four trainers. You'll win a prize if you beat him. All right, well, let's go take on this gym leader. But before we do, I have a feeling we're going to need to heal up. Actually, most of my Pokemon are healed except for Nani, so... I guess I don't really need the Pokemon Center, but we still do need to grab some items. Hey, you little tyke, it may not be very smart to challenge me, but it takes guts. I will be your final entertainment for today with my authentic Kanto-style Pokemon battle. Ooh, I wonder what he could mean by that. Is he actually going to use Kanto Pokemon? Because everybody else in this gym kind of used whatever they wanted. But here is the Kantonian gym leader himself. Doesn't even have a name, doesn't even need one, and he's actually got Machoke, which is what I was going to predict he's got, because that's kind of one of the only fighting Pokemon of, I guess, Kanto. You've got Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan, but I don't think those are in this game, so... Yeah, Machoke seems a little bit more likely. I mean, I was going to say Machamp, actually, but that would have been a little bit too powerful. You know, at least he's got an evolution, though, and knockoff, too. Oh, jeez, that actually kind of hurt, and knocked off our thick club, too, which means that this flame charge is actually going to do less damage now, probably not even going to take out the Machoke, so, you know what, I think I'm actually just going to switch over to, hmm, I guess Navy would be the best to deal with this, Disarming Voice is definitely super effective, and actually Navy is the one that's fallen behind in levels, I've just realized, uh, Navi kind of caught up, so maybe I'll start training Navy a little bit again, because uh, he is pretty close to evolving as well, I think at level 35, even though I kept saying it was at 36, uh, now I don't remember. It might be 37. Oh, jeez. I don't know how I keep forgetting this. I don't know why I'm saying, oh, geez, so much. I must have some kind of Morty syndrome right now, but we're going to get level 33. And yeah, I'm definitely going to move Navy up to the front of the party after this battle, but not before learning Double Slap or not learning it in this case. Uh, but yeah, this dude's only got one Pokemon, which for a gym leader is kind of surprising. I thought he might have a little bit more, but Arg, my authentic style Kanto battle no probably should have had a couple more pokemon there buddy you sure are strong okay boy you get the surge badge wait really we literally get the surge badge like the one from professor surge or i mean lieutenant it suits those who have defeated me it's a novelty item but take good care of it okay there is something else you're the first cantonian so here are some great food and drink for you oh really we're the first person ever to beat this we got a special item, or I guess an item with the leader special written on it. That item set contains a shocking combo of 10 Sodi Pops and some Poke Beans. Guzzle down those beans and crunch down the pop. We hope to see you again here at the Cantonian Gym. Zap! Awesome. Is that all? Oh wow, we literally got kicked out, are you kidding me? And it's actually dark out here now, which is awesome because we get to show off more of these uh, lanterns here in Mali. But is that really it? Can we not go back in here? I guess we can, but I'm saying, will there be anything different, though? Whoa, hold up. Wait a minute. You can challenge us for a thousand. Okay, let's do it. I want to go talk to that dude. What? Our staff can't keep up. Come back again tomorrow, kid. Are you kidding me? We got kicked out again? I want to go see what Ryuki's up to. And hey, look at these little, two little Pokemon staring at a totem sticker here. I don't know if I should pick it up, though. I guess I'm going to wait until we're done with the whole island. But yeah, once we're done with Ula Ula, I'm definitely going to go through and pick up all of those totem stickers. Because like I said, there's a certain totem Pokemon that I kind of want to get. Uh, you guys, some of you may be able to guess who it is. I don't think there's like any secret or anything, though, if we try to follow his steps. But we can definitely follow it to Lily here. How's it going? Orange, I'm sorry. I ended up getting lost yet again. I wandered around completely lost until I ducked into the apparel shop. Wait, I was there. I did not see you, Lily. What are you talking about? I saw this outfit, and they said it was the last one they had in stock, so I bought it. Even though I don't think I'd ever have the guts to wear an outfit like that. <laughs> but the woman working at the store did tell me where to find the library, so I guess you could say it was all for the best. Though, the library was actually right past the apparel store, if I just kept going. Whoa, watch out! It's a giant horse! Yeek! <laughs> That face she did for a second, it was like a ditto or something. Orange, been a while, friend. 
Looks like your island challenge is coming along favorably. That must be pleasing to the Tapu. So, Orange, who might this be? Ooh, is she a little jealous? Hello, my name is Lily. My apologies if Mudsdale spooked you just now. Doesn't seem like you're a trial goer. What are you up to? You know, just chilling in the rain. No problem at all. I'm actually, uh, studying the Tapu's ruins for various reasons of my own. Well, that's some fine initiative. I'd be happy to show you the way whenever you'd like to go. My Mudsdale here is as sturdy as all get out. She can easily carry too. Thank you for your offer. Oh, that's pretty cool. They're gonna do a little bit of girl bonding. I guess with the horse too. That is a really big Mudsdale, by the way. Shall we check out Mally Library first though, since we're here? Sure thing. I have a feeling we're gonna run into even more girl power here. And whoa, look who's back there actually. The book I'm looking for is a very old one. It's a book that contains old myths and legends that Professor Bernay told me about. Those tales seem to suggest that Alola's legendary Pokemon came from another world. Really now? Another world like the Ultra World you mean? So this is the library, just look at all those books. I love the smell of books. Hey, I actually love it too. And Rotom, come on buddy, cheer up. It's a new year, it's time for love and happiness. I mean, I didn't make that little skip for anything, okay buddy? I gave you all the Netflix that you want. How can you not be satisfied? Anyone is welcome to read the books here at the Mali Library. Okay, I guess we'll go pick some up. I'm actually kind of curious what kind of books they've got here. I guess we can only read the special ones. Some myriad Z moves. The vigor and strength of the trainer to combine. Thus came the Z of Zenith. Wait, what? Does the Z power actually, or the Z and Z power actually stand for Zenith? So it's actually Zenith power. That's kind of cool. I never knew that. But yeah, I don't feel like reading all these. That seems like a little bit too deep for me to understand. I legit thought that it was maybe like a book written by one of the champions, but I'm not quite so sure. Uh, what the heck? An old photo dropped from between the pages. Huh? I never knew that this was here, but I'm sure glad I checked out all these books actually. It shows a girl, a Mudsdale, and a garden. Oh, could that actually be Hapu maybe? Oh, a photo! Maybe I can find out who it belongs to by checking who borrowed the book. Here, I'll hold on to the photo for ya. What? Did we really just hand it over from all the way over there? They didn't bother making our characters walk up or something? Come on, man. That is not possible. You can't throw a photo that far. It would just flop to the ground, but... I've heard there's a book somewhere about the legendary Pokemon said to be Alola's very own son. That's crazy, bro. Pokemon can't be the son. Or I guess the son can't be a Pokemon, but... Here is our good old friend, Alolan Oak. And you must know about regional variants, of course. You're one of them, bro. Just as I would have expected. Yes, regional variants. They arise when the influences of a particular region cause a Pokemon's physical aspect and even type to change. If you have a local Persian, the regional variant, I would like to see it. Uh, well, I really don't right now. Maybe in the future. There's a little Alolan Meowth right here, though. You could ask this little kid to evolve it. I mean, I'm sure that would be way quicker than me having to go catch one and give it to him. Oh, this lady's from Johto. That's awesome. Is it true you can't use Fly around here? Uh, yeah, you gotta get on Charizard, buddy. This really is a whole different region. But then, how do they fly around in Alola? On Charizard. So everyone just rides around on special Charizard race for the job? Sounds weird if you ask me, but I've gotta admit that riding on a Charizard would be a blast. Thanks for teaching me about how things are here. I'll give you this lovely TM. Whoa. I did not know that lady was going to give us fly actually, but that's pretty awesome. This kind of TM is a real big deal where I'm from. They're called hidden machines because they're so hard to get your hands on. But here I guess it's just another TM. Maybe you can use it in battle or something. Yeah, probably not just because I'm not a big fan of moves that take two turns to hit. But it is a pretty powerful flying move, so might not be too bad to add on your flying Pokemon there. But like I said, we got another girly meeting going on here. Must be a very valuable book, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to take it out of the library. Who's this spooky lady? Is that the book we're looking for? Oh, she literally said it. Princess, give it a read. Oh, of course. Alright, let's check this book out. Must be real important if it was just laying on the table. It's titled The Light of Alola. It's just, uh, I'll read it out loud, shall I? No, please, not more reading! The empty sky broke asunder, a hole appearing where had been none. A single beast appeared from in it. It was called the beast that devours the sun. The king of Alola bowed before it, the beast that shone so like the sun. 
The Gylent Guardians fought against it, but in the end, the beast had won. Then did the beast that devours the sun shine its light on the line of kings. Then did the beast that had won bring nature's gift to bless all things. Beast of sun and beast of moon, through their union they brought new life, a fragile heir in Alola born, that island guardians would keep from strife. The ancient kings sang their thanks for Solgaleo with song of flute. Two tones rang across the altar, a perfect pair, ever after mute. So that was kind of like a poem, I guess because of all the rhyming. It was pretty cool actually. Isn't it great? My dad's books are all great! What? I mean, yes, it is. But when you say your father, isn't this book very old? Oh, how old is she? It belonged to my dad. I know I don't look it, but my family used to be pretty much royalty. I had to have all of my dad's book move here so they didn't get ruined by the Pokemon. I can tell you lots of other old stories about Alola too. You interested? I think I'm good. That would be wonderful. I'd be delighted if you did. Okay, well, you do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do something else. You'll be undergoing another trial, won't you? Good luck with that. I read that Ula Ula's Island's electric type trial can only be reached by the bus on Route 10. Oh, that's right. We're supposed to go meet up with Kakui on the bus. I kind of forgot that we left him hanging this whole time, but I have a feeling there must be a totem sticker here. And yes, indeed, it's all the way up here. Uh, I guess on this column, which is... A nice little hiding spot. I didn't know that our trainer would actually be able to reach it, but of course he can. He can throw photos across dimensions. Or I guess just across the library, but... Anyway, let's get the hay out of here and back out to Mali. Because we gotta go meet up with the professor over at Route 10. Anyway, uh, Grimer eats garbage. That's great. You're a janitor, so I guess you kind of also eat garbage. Anyway, it's time to move along to Route 10 at last. And I believe it is actually down this way. Uh, what is this guy talking about? I don't really care, but let's go to Route 10. I kind of thought it was going to be the one facing downwards, but I just remembered that that leads us all the way to Acerola's trial eventually, and this lady also needs some help. Here is a long and wide route. It's a great place to let your Pokemon play a bit. My Stuffle hadn't been getting much exercise, so I let him out their balls to go and run around for a bit, but they haven't come back. I want to go look for them, but it's hard for an old lady like me to traipse all around. If you find him, just tell him to come back to me. They're impish creatures, but smart as a cookie. Alright, I'll go look for your stuffle. We got this. There's eight of them total. Maybe they're hiding. Ah, oh, well, some of them are. Of course, this little side quest was in the original Sun and Moon, so nothing really new here. And nothing new with this hero that's about to attack us either. Coming straight out the tree for our booty. Okay, maybe that's not exactly what it was after, but with those little claws, the way they, like, squeeze it. I don't want to talk about it, okay? Rotom, for real! You need to just chill. Do you think we can battle all the trainers here in Alola? Yeah, let's do it, dude! I mean, I've pretty much been fighting every single trainer so far, and here we've got yet another one. That's the spirit. Everyone should know that you're an amazing trainer, Orange. Oh, my bad. I was I was reading what Rotom said and not what the fireman said, but who cares about the fireman? He's about to be done so in a second. And whoa, his name is actually Alex, which is crazy because... That is my little stepbrother's name, and if you guys don't know, I'm currently in Texas right now. Which is why you may not have seen a couple of videos, or videos for the last couple of days, but... Unfortunately for us, Alex here, who is definitely not my little stepbrother, um, because he's only like 8, and this guy looks a little bit older. Anyway, he's got an Octillery, which is really weird, and not a great matchup for Nani, so let's switch out to Darwin real quick. Um, and I've actually just remembered that I said I was gonna switch Nani up to first in the party, so... Definitely gonna try to do that after we finish this battle here. That is, if we can finish it, because we gotta take out this Octillery first. And it's got Aurora Beam, uh-oh! I was kind of thinking it might have an Ice-type move, but... I mean, it didn't take us down, so I guess we're okay. And one more Razor Leaf will definitely take him out. Uh, but yeah, that finally reminds me that I was gonna talk about what's been going on the last few days, and my plans for 2018. Um, this guy was extinguished, apparently. Get it? But yeah, I guess I don't really want to go too into detail on my plans for 2018. You guys will have to wait and see, but I definitely plan on putting more effort or I guess more focus into YouTube because as I mentioned in the last video, in the last couple of videos, um, I feel like my focus in 2017 shifted a little bit, kind of unintentionally, kind of a little bit intentional, but whoa, this lady here will actually heal our Pokemon for us, so we don't even have to go all the way back to the Pokemon Center. And that's actually great because we're running into a Crab Brawler here. We haven't seen one of these in quite a long time. Actually, I don't even know if I caught one, so 
Maybe I'll try for this one. Oh, no, we already got one, so never mind. Time to run away. But yeah, uh, although to begin the year, I'm not going to be able to do daily uploads, I don't think, unfortunately. Here's another Stuffle, by the way. There's two of them right next to each other, and I was about to miss that one because he's kind of at an awkward angle. But yeah, we had one behind the palm tree and right behind the bigger tree. Um, anyway, I'm currently in Texas, like I said, visiting my family. If you guys want to see more of that, you can check out my Instagram. It is Munching Orange, and if you don't have Instagram, well, um, I guess you can't really check it out. But if you want to check it out, I've been posting a lot of stories on there of my adventures here in Texas and just in general hanging out with the family. Um, I got my mom, my sister, and now, of course, a little step bro who actually loves to watch these videos as well as just gaming in general. So it's been pretty awesome, pretty fun stuff so far. And I'm looking forward to spending more time with them. Um, and I think I'm actually going to be here until the 10th of January. So until the 10th, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to keep up daily videos. But I'm going to try to still post as much as I can, guys. But after that, once I'm back home, I'm definitely shifting the focus. I'm going to stop being a lazy orange and just prioritize YouTube once again. Or I guess more than I have been in 2017. Um, but yeah, part of that will definitely be to try to rush more through this game because I know a lot of you guys in the comments have been not really complaining But just saying like orange I got this game yesterday, and I'm already past you bro Like what are you doing and to that? I have to say that I literally beat this entire game in like two days or something or I guess ultra moon not really ultra Sun um, But I didn't record it and I feel like I definitely should have recorded it because I literally would have had the whole play throughout by now And that was definitely a mistake that I don't think I'm going to make in future years. I mean, we've got Pokemon on the Switch coming out at some point this year, maybe next year. Ooh, we got Rock Slide, which is a little bit more powerful, but slightly less accuracy. I'm just waiting for that Stone Edge, though, because then we can use Lycanroc Z-Power. You bother me? Why? Well, you don't bother me at all, Beauty. You can stand in front of me as long as you want. Anyway, we got another little Stuffle over here. I hope that that Pokemon in the tree doesn't attack us. And it looks like we're good. Go back to your mother, little Stuffle. Yeah, and there's even another one hiding behind this little sign here, so that's four down and four more to go, I believe. Uh, but before we take on this next trainer, let me finally remember to put Navy up first, because Nani's paralyzed anyway, so. Might be kind of nice to have a Pokemon that isn't status, but buses can get a whole lot of people to where they need to go all at once. Though I'd kind of like to see a whole herd of ride Pokemon like Toro stampeding together. Yo, that would actually be a really nice sight to behold, if that's like how you say that, but... Yeah, what I'm saying is it would be pretty awesome to see a whole stampede of Tauros. Not going to happen, at least not for now, though. We are going to run into a wild Pokemon, and it is going to be another Fero, really? I did not know that you could actually find those just in the grass. I thought you could only find them in those shaking trees, but I have a feeling there's another Stuffle over here, though now that I looked, I don't think there is, but there is another one! Is it just me or has this happened like way too many times this playthrough? Like where we run into the same Pokemon over and over and over in the same route. I don't know. I feel like that keeps happening. But here's another little Stuffle, you little cutie. Get back over there. And we've also got a cop. Oh, no. Looks like he's actually protecting one of the Stuffles, too. Wait, I thought he might be doing a siren impression. Yeah, that was pretty good. Wee-oo, wee-oo, wee-oo. Okay, that wasn't very good. But you know what I can do an impression of is actually when like... The car alarm noise goes off, you know, when it goes boop, boop, meh, 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 boo, boo, boo. Okay, maybe that's not very good, but I'm sure some of you guys out there might know what I'm talking about. And I feel like I've done that in a video before as well, because I just got a kind of sense of deja vu. But this dude here has got a Growlithe, so not going to be any trouble at all for Nani. Oh, wait, hold up. Wait a minute. You're actually faster than us. What the? No problem, though. Once uh, Nani, or why do I just call you Nani? I guess we've got too many Pokemon with NA names, you know, like Natural, Navy, and Nani. But I guess Navy and Nani specifically are kind of close. Anyway, once you become a Prime Marina, you'll definitely be faster than those pesky Growlithes. Maybe even faster than these little Stuffle who ran away. But we're almost done now. I think that's the sixth one there. So we got maybe two or maybe one more, actually. We might have already picked up seven. Uh, but either way, we got Team Skull over here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? You never see somebody take a bus stop to go before? Wait, you're literally taking the bus stop? You trying to steal it? You best go find your own, you heard? What? Why would I want the bus stop? I just want to go on the actual bus. Do these Team Skull Grunts not know how buses work? I mean, they are numbskulls after all. Plumeria literally calls them the, the dummy 
they're dumb little brothers or something like that. And they literally are quite dumb. But I'm not going to judge him, even though I clearly just judge them. But he's got a Hound Hour, which once again is an awesome matchup for Navy here because it is a Dark and Fire. And actually, Navy's not a fairy type just yet, but like I said, once we become Prime Marina, uh, we'd be resistant to both of those typings. We'd actually have resisted that bite there as well. But to wrap up what I was talking about, uh, the whole 2017 dilemma, there's definitely a lot of videos that I plan on making last year that I didn't get around to, like and such as the house tour slash apartment tour. A lot of you guys were asking me about that. Or I guess to show off the uh, apartment that you guys may have seen in the Rotom skit last episode. But dang, I lost. My homies gotta fight you. That's just life in Team Skull. We stand up to even the strong, yo. We stand up, but not for long, yo. That's true. If they get a little tired, they squat down and do the little, uh, what's it called? It's, it's Slavic pose? I don't know if that's like a, what it's really called, but... I feel like it was a meme for a while, or maybe it's not really a meme, maybe it's actually a thing or a stereotype, I'm not sure, but they definitely like to squat down like the Russian gangsters, or I guess they're not really Russian. I'm just gonna stop talking now, and we'll focus on the fact that there's a Golbat in front of us, and that might not be great. Uh, yep, there's the Confused Way already, getting a little bit annoying up in here. But yeah, aside from the house tour slash apartment tour, which I definitely still plan on doing, I guess you're just going to be coming a little bit late. Um, I've got to do now a house tour 2017, as well as the apartment tour 2018, I guess, because I did actually already fill my room, um, like back before I moved into the apartment I'm in now. Well, not technically now, because I'm off in Texas, but back in Chicago, um, I've moved into an apartment for, I think, a month and a half now, so it's been quite a while of me being in there but now that I'm finally all settled in and ready to show it off more I guess I'll definitely have to re prepare an apartment tour 2018 eventually but before that comes out I'm definitely going to be doing a house tour 2017 like I said of the house that I used to live in with like Sully Pones and Zelda Master um, and previously Johnny Awesome, Purple Rodri and a couple of other YouTubers out there. Uh, we've had a lot of YouTubers come through and go and leave and Darwin is learning synthesis right now which I'm not sure if it's actually better than Giga Drain. I mean, we really don't have that great of a special attack, so maybe it might actually be better to have Synthesis instead of Giga Drain. I don't know, I really don't ever use Giga Drain that much. I'm probably going to use Synthesis even less, to be honest. But I don't know if you care, but that bus stop weighs about as much as a Golem. So how'd you plan on stealing it? Are you literally telling me your plan wasn't even going to work? Yo, think about the bus drivers. If we take this bus stop, they can all chill. Huh? Oh, I'm over this. Back to living large at the mansion. Huh. What mansion? The mansion tour that I was just talking about? What? Orange! Hey, Professor. What's going on? Some Team Skull Punks just ran past me going in the other direction. Yeah. I sure wish they'd challenge the League instead of getting up to no good all the time. The League? Huh? Ho ho! You'll find out soon enough. Just you wait, cousin. Wait, is the Pokemon League already built? First things first, if you want to head up Mount Hokulani, we should take the bus. It'll be a blast up there to the top, yeah, as quick as a sky uppercut. Well, I've actually got some things to do first, Kikui. There's a couple of little stuffles that are still hidden around here, and oh, I thought for sure there would be like a hidden totem sticker back here, or maybe back there, but apparently not. Uh, Rotom? Come on, dude. You know what I told you already, okay? Oh. Never mind, he just wants to road a lot of this time around, but I feel like there's still a couple of stuffles left, and no! Not another Firo! Not even gonna bother showing that one off, because we all know it was a Firo, but yeah, aside from those uh, apartment slash house tour, there's a couple of other videos and just series that I also really wanted to do and didn't get around to in 2017. Like, I'm pretty sure I have like four or five Elite Trainer boxes at this point stacked up, uh, as well as a bunch of other Pokemon trading cards that I've been meaning to unbox. And also Pokemon toys and just different stuff that I wanted to do for the Pokemon that I never got to do. And apparently we got all the stuffles. That's nice. Have this muscle band for me as a token of appreciation. Nice. Also, Rotom is telling us to heal our Pokemon now. I love it. Rotom's got our back, you know. When I don't heal my Pokemon, whoa, hold up. 15k. Cute and strong and just a little bit wild. That's what a Pokemon should be like. And that's why Stuffle is the best. 
Well, you know, I kind of prefer the evolution, but... You're right, Rotom, I should check for healing items. Our navy is very beat up, but then again, we don't really need to heal up right now. Because we're literally about to head up the mountain with uh, Kukui. But yeah, definitely look out this year for the return of the unboxings, the Pokemart. Hopefully I can make it like a bi-weekly series, maybe alternating. That's kind of the plan. But like I said, until January 10th when I'm back home and I can set up the schedule and everything, that'll be when we can kick off the year in full stride. And I guess we've got to actually talk to the bus stop. You want to wait and catch the bus? Yes, that's right. And this has got to be the best bus out there, the Executor Express. Our safe driving record will absolutely slay you. Ooh, slay me, Daddy Executor. I don't know why I said that. But yep, we're already up the mountain. That was like lightning quick right there. Kind of weird, because Executor is not really electric, but... Over here! Alright, Kukui, chill out, dude. I'm coming. Mount Hokulani is the second tallest mountain in Alola. And the tallest? Check it out, Orange. You see that steep, jutting, majestic peak right over there? Wow, that's kind of descriptive. That's Mount Lanakila, the highest peak in Alola. What are all those lights up there? Looking like uh, Disneyland over there. It's a sacred spot, yeah, the closest you can ever get to the legendary Pokemon of Alola, said to be the Sun Incarnate. That's it, right there, on the peak of Lanakila. That's where I'll establish our Pokemon League. Oh, so it's not quite built yet. We'll get everybody who's finished their island challenges, yeah, and up there on the peak of Mount Lanakila, they'll battle against the Kahunas to become the Island Challenge Champion. I've always valued our old traditions here in Alola, but it's time to make a champion the whole world will recognize. It's time to get our own Elite Four and make our own Pokemon League. That sounds awesome, bruh. To think that someday the kiddos in Alola will be able to go from being the Island Challenge Champion to the World Champion. And then we will have our own champion. They can show the rest of the world what's so special about Alolan Pokemon and their trainers, yeah. That's true, you got the Z-Moves, that's exclusive to Alola. Uh, we got Alolan Forms, those are pretty awesome. And, okay, Rotom, we're good, bro. We're literally in front of the Pokemon Center. Except not quite right now, because that is going to be the end of this episode. I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope you all had a happy new year. Definitely made it my own resolution to put forth more effort, both for myself and for you guys here on the channel. So look forward to more videos, hopefully soon. But like I said, January 10th, I'll be back to hopefully daily uploads, so look forward to that as well. And I will see you all in the next episode of Ultra Sun and Moody.